We're living in the days of the human superstar. Let me explain. Every day from the moment I wake up till the minute my head hits the pillow, I'm bombarded with ideas and images of those who've supposed to have made it. The successful ones who've got it all, the ones we want to be like. You might say I'm being tight, but if you dig deeper, it's obvious things aren't always what they seem. Just check the lives, they're normal, just like you and me. It gets hard sometimes, life's a grind. Loneliness and depression often aren't far behind. You see, there's only one true superstar worth trying to be like. No glitz and glamour though, just one God who left heaven to walk this real life. He got his hands dirty, struggled with the same stuff you and I do. Difference is, he didn't cave in, he was perfect, lived his life full. No prizes for guessing who I'm talking about though. Most of the time you probably see him wearing a white nightie hanging in some stained glass window. Jesus Christ. You might just know it as a swear word, but I promise you there's more to it than that. Just check the next verse. The good book says he was both God and man rolled into one. He was the man's man, hard as nails, yet the most sensitive and loving person ever to walk these trails. How's that possible, you say? Like I said, he was God in human form, and he's coming back again one day. He had all the power in the universe at his fingertips, yet he still took 39 lashes to his back with the cat and nine tails whip. A whip made from strips of leather, each with pieces of bone and flint stuck in them. Yet he still managed to hold it together, saying, Father, forgive them. He broke all the rules of that day by valuing women. Spent his time with the down and outs and those who were real, the ones who weren't really living. He spoke up for those who didn't have a voice, but more than that, he always had time for people. Didn't turn anyone away, seeing all as equal. He cried. He even washed his mate's feet. Don't know if I could do that. Age 33, his time came to an end as they nailed him to that tree. But what's the point of that, you're thinking? To be continued, verse 3. is we've all messed up and done stuff wrong which means we can't go looking the creator of the universe in the face for very long and just like anywhere else whether school college or the workplace you do something wrong you get a punishment maybe even have to go through a court case so there's us mankind standing before god things not looking great he looks at us his heart melts i love them he says more than life itself i don't want to punish them because they fall so in steps jesus as yours and my substitute takes the rap once and for all how did it go down that night They nailed his hands and feet and stuck a spear in his side. They put a crown made of thorns on his head. Then he died slowly on that cross and bled. You thought you were worth dying for. But that's not the end. Three days later, he made a spectacle of death. He got up, folded his grave clothes and left them in a pile on that empty bed. New life, fresh breath, all that for me and you. God's done his part, now it's your response. What do you do? Either yes, I believe, and your name's written in the book of life. Or no, I reject it and face hellish consequences in a future that's not bright. Where do you stand? There is a God who loves you the way you are and desperately wants you to take his hand. But it's your choice. Where do you stand? If you want to make that step today and take God's hand and walk with him the rest of your days, then we're going to pray. Dear God, I'm sorry for the wrong stuff I've done. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Please forgive me and come into my life. I want to be friends with you and live my life the way you want me to. From this day on. Amen.